stay up. Welcome back. And in the words of the late and the lovable Bob Ross, certainly glad you could join me today. We're just going to beat the devil out of it. Any road up, let's crack on. So first, a little bit of admin coming up shortly on the channel. I'll be undertaking some further upgrades and accessorization of the Royal Enfield Interceptor 650 using some excellent parts from Tech Bike Parts and from Hitchcock's Motorcycles. So uh, stick around and stay tuned for that. I'll also be having a go at the first the 300 mile service on my Royal Enfield Classic 350 and that will include an oil and filter change, it will include the chain adjustment, the fitting of a performance air filter and even, fingers crossed, the removal of the tank and the adjustment of the tappets all of which are requirements of the first service. So uh, that's what's coming to the channel and obviously uh, also uh, there'll be some more reviews of clothing, that'll be controversial and um, obviously one or two or even more ride outs in the beautiful Yorkshire Dales countryside as we come into the spring. So for today, and sort of by way of a, a follow-up, I suppose, of um, a, a video I did recently regarding issues of quality uh, and using the, uh, the Interceptor 650 as an example, um, I want to talk a little bit about aftermarket accessories. And I just want really to offer um, my sort of simple four stage rule for making sure that you don't end up disappointed with, uh, with what you buy in terms of accessories uh, for your bike. So, uh, and, I, and I hope to uh, as well debunk one or two uh, more urban myths um, all being well. So uh, we're going to crack on with that. Now, if you'll indulge me, please, I'm going to do an Uncle Stew. I'm going to do an Uncle Stuart because what I'm going to do is I'm going to voice over. Voice over some B-roll. Now don't yawn and switch off because uh, the subject matter I think you'll find quite interesting, quite enlightening. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to do an Uncle Stu. Uh, because you know I've been way too busy this week to be filming. I mean I've built a wardrobe, I've painted the Flamborough Lighthouse. I've had to climb Ben Nevis naked and uh, it's been 146 foot of snow outside with black ice on top and fog and high winds and a solar eclipse. So, not a pot washed, nor a sausage pricked. Let's roll the intro, eh? Now it's on the back of some recent comments concerning the quality of certain aftermarket parts and accessories for motorcycles that I got to thinking about the subject in greater detail, with a weather eye and something of a raised eyebrow on the often disparaging remarks levelled at merchandise manufactured in a certain part of the world. And in case you hadn't already guessed, I refer of course to China or more specifically the PRC, the People's Republic of China, which of course excludes Taiwan. Now there's a seemingly endless proliferation of sagely advice referencing the dubious quality of motorcycle products manufactured in the PRC. Advice which often employs histrionic language juxtaposing the word Chinese with terms such as rubbish, crap, tat, garbage, junk, and not forgetting, of course, that favourite precursor of all, cheap, chosen, no doubt, because of its alliterative appeal. You know, it's as if in uh, recent years, the word cheap, has acquired an almost exclusively pejorative meaning 
being as it is routinely employed to describe everything from throwaway comments to the people who make them. Quite why the term has acquired its derogatory nature is a matter for debate, but most likely it derives from a combination of Hollywood movies, popular written fiction, and more latterly, social and broadcast media. Having woven its way into the English-speaking lexicon as a byword for poor quality and standards, it's surely time for us to take the word back to its origins as a descriptor of all things regarded as being affordable or inexpensive. Now we covered the subject of quality a few videos back when discussing some of the components of the Royal Enfield Interceptor. So there's little value in revisiting the whole thing other than to concede that there is indeed an accepted and established correlation between price and quality. Remember that tired old cliche, you get what you pay for? Well, sometimes you do, and sometimes you don't. I'm sure that we've all paid that little bit more for items we consider to be of premium quality, whether because of brand profile, or reputational provenance, or whatever, only to find them a huge disappointment. Equally, we've all bought that bargain item with little expectation of its lasting very long, only to find that it endures years of frequent and loyal use. So with all of that said, let's turn our attention to motorcycles and motorcycle parts and accessories. It's of no real interest to me at all where a product is made, save for two specific sets of circumstances. The first is that I need to be as confident as I could be that the product in question did not owe its existence to cruelty or exploitation. And that's whilst accepting that all goods are in some way a product of exploitation, as the people making or producing them are seldom, if ever, paid their true worth. And sadly, that's more true today than it was 12 years ago, certainly here in the UK. And the second set of circumstances is that as an Englishman, I would much rather buy something made in the United Kingdom. But given that now only 20% of the UK economy is manufacturing, that is something of a forlorn aspiration. By the way, as a matter of interest, the other 80% is service industries. Well enough said. So for me, there are just four qualities which are important when it comes to a potential purchase. Number one is aesthetics. Style, looks, feel and the tactile response. The second is function. Does it do the job it's meant to do? The third is durability. Is it reliable and will it last? And the fourth is price. Because if you can't afford it, the rest is pointless. Now those high-end handmade premium products of UK origin, when you can find them, are by their nature set at a very high price point, out of reach to many motorcycle enthusiasts seeking to accessorise their machines. And there's a certain illogic to throwing those kind of upgrades at a £6,500 Royal Enfield, for example, such that the accessories all but then outvalue the entire stock bike. So it is that we turn to the likes of China for many of our motorcycle farkles and tranquillements because, after all, they are at once affordable and with a little due diligence, certainly not cheap Chinese junk. You know, I'm often dismayed by some of the occasional snobbery which accompanies the dismissal of Chinese made parts. Yep, some will be of questionable finish and function, but many are of perfectly acceptable quality, fit for purpose, durable in nature, and at an accessible price for the motorcycle masses. I've heard comments from people confidently asserting 
that they would never fit such and such a part to their bikes because it's cheap Chinese rubbish. A statement which invites you, reasonably, to assume that they've never fitted such an item in the first place and therefore leads you to further wonder how on earth they know. I have, over the years, bought many upgrades and accessories without a thought for their provenance. I once bought a pair of chrome spotlights for me, Triumph Rocket 3 Touring. They cost about 50 quid, the pair. And when they arrived, I remember being well impressed with the quality of finish. It looked and felt high-end, the lights worked perfectly, and the finish remained untarnished through years of use. And when I came to sell the bike, I took the lights off because I liked them so much. And I saw for the first time a little stamp underneath by the bezel. And guess what it said? Made in China. Now, we've heard all the arguments, haven't we? Not least those based upon political considerations around the conduct of the Chinese state. Sometimes these views are coloured by our own media output and the questionable positioning of governments which condemn China's human rights record on the one hand whilst cozying up to Saudi Arabia as it continues to indulge in its policy of publicly cutting off the heads of people it doesn't agree with. Now, goes to show, doesn't it, that anybody can conveniently lock away their indignations if it's economically expedient to do so. And to those who are all too ready to reject the use of Chinese-made goods on moral grounds, I would simply say that life as you know it would take a rapid swan dive if you were ever to act on those principles. In all likelihood, you'd lose your car, your motorcycle, your TV, your computer, your phone, your fridge, your central heating and most of your clothes. And please don't tell me that your designer trolleys are made in Italy because I'm prepared to bet that the loom that the cloth was spun on contained Chinese made parts. So there, in conclusion, let's continue to seek out quality motorcycle accessories based upon our assessment of their worth to us in our own particular circumstances. Using logical, deductive, level-headed, unprejudiced reasoning. Let's throw a deaf ear to those naysayers who arbitrarily dismiss anything not made through the sweat, blood and tears of an artisan craftsman. All that's required for us to secure good quality merchandise at an affordable price is that we do our research, trust to our individual judgment and block out the white noise of negativity.